Hello and welcome back to MTG Virgining, your channel for all things magic. It is EDH Commander Thursday and in today's video we are going to take one step closer to completing our EDH Demir Mill build generaled by the community selection of Lazaf Demir Mastermind. <laughs> What's up, MTGBC? Here we are again, continuing our deck building series around your selection of Lazaf Demir Mastermind. If you missed any of the previous installments in this series, you can click on the links in the description below and bring you right up to speed. In today's video, we are going to install some mana ramp and some card advantage and tutoring effects. But before we do so, let's take a very quick look as to what's already been included in the 99. Altar of the Brood, Ruin Crab, Maddening Cacophony, Folio of Fancies, Mana Scribe, Mind Crank, King Narfi's Betrayal, Psychic Corrosion, Memory Erosion, Court of Cunning, Consuming Aberration, Mind Grind, Altar of Dementia, Thief of Sanity, Sphinx's Tutelage, Teferi's Tutelage, Mind Funeral, Fraying Sanity, Startled Awake, Persistent Nightmare, Nemesis of Reason, Merkel Vosk Mind Drinker, Enter the God Eternals, Traumatize, Geth Lord of the Vault, Reanimate, Blood Chief Ascension, Nighthawk Scavenger, Guilt Feeder, Extract from Darkness, Chainer Dementia Master, Sir Conrad the Grim, Rakshasa Debaser, Rexiel the Risen Deep, Diluvian Primordial, Sepulchral Primordial, Rise of the Dark Realms, Rapid Hybridization, Absorb Identity, Drown in the Lock, Recoil, Murder, Fleshbag Marauder, Merciless Executioner, Plague Crafter, Curtain's Call, Decree of Pain, Plague Wind, and in Garrick's Wake. And like I said, we're going to include 10 ramp and card draw advantage tutor spells. And then the next time we continue this series, we're going to complete this deck by adding the land base and a few other surprise miscellaneous cards. So let's get started with some mana ramp. Bam! Soul Ring. Don't need to talk about it. It's going in. Next card going up is a Wayfarer's Bauble. An artifact for one, tap two, sacrifice it, and it acts as a rampant growth. We're not in green, so we gotta do what we can to ramp up our mana. Arcane Signet, this is Soul Ring 2B. No, I'm sorry, that doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, the casting cost is two. I was looking at the, the portion of the card. Just edit that out in your minds. Do me a favor. Let's just try to, you know, just put that behind us. We'll move forward. We'll show a Demir Signet. Okay, that'll work. And then lastly, as part of our mana ramp, we're going to include Sword of the Animist. It's an equipment with a mana value of two, gives the equipped creature plus one, plus one, and whenever this creature attacks, we're going to search our library and put a swap or an island onto the battlefield tapped because that's what it does. All right, those are five mana ramp. Now let's talk about some card advantage, some tutoring effects, and let's start with Lim Duel's Vault. Now we are not going to include any straight tutors in this deck. There will be no demonic tutor. There will be no diabolic intent. There's no vampiric tutor either. This is just going to be a very straightforward. There isn't really one card in this deck that's going to be more valuable than any other. We've constructed it in such a way that the deck itself is going to be just fine 
from card 1 to card 99. So we will not have to tutor for any potential win condition cards. However, it won't behoove us to try to set up the top of our library as best we see fit. So Lim Duel's Vault is going to go in. It's a blue and a black at instant speed. We can look at the top five cards of our library. And as many times as we choose, we may put those cards on the bottom of our library and look at the next top five. And if we do, it cost us one life each time we do this. And then we shuffle all but the top five cards of our library when we find the five that we like, and we put those on our library on top of our library in any order. So we get to pretty much go through our deck five cards at a time, find the best five cards that we want, and then order them on top of the deck as best we want, and then just draw them as the turns and the game proceeds. So one copy of Lim Duel's Vault to act as a way in which to further our game plan. Next up, we're going to include a copy of Windfall. Two and a blue at sorcery speed. Each player discards their hand, then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. I have a little bit of trepidation including this card. I, as a general as a general deck building rule and philosophy, I do not like to include cards that can help out our opponents. I really don't want to give our opponents any additional ways in which to win the game. However, this can help us with getting some cards in our hand. This can help us by forcibly making our opponents discard their hands, which could trigger Lazaf into a very, very choice creature. So, again, I feel some angst including a card like Windfall, but I do think that the benefits outweigh the potential risks. We'll have to see through gameplay and playtesting if those sentiments are valid. All right, next up as another card advantage spell, we are going to include a copy of Phyrexian Arena. It's an enchantment, one and two black. At the beginning of our upkeep, we draw a card and lose one life. Pretty standard four black, pay a life, draw a card. And with two spells left, the next we're going to include is a copy of Factor Fiction. Of course, it's an instant three and two blue, EOT, that means end of turn. We cast this, and then we reveal the top five cards of our library. An opponent separates those into two piles. We put one into our hand and the other into our graveyard. Not only is this a very good self-serving card, but there is the potential for political machinations during a game of Commander. If there is somebody who is really getting out of control and we have a fact or fiction in hand, we can leave it up to one of our opponents to put the best cards needed to slow that opponent down. So fact or fiction is a very versatile spell that will be that will be welcomed into this Dex 99 with arms wide open. And our last spell that we're going to include in this video as we conclude with number 10 is going to be a copy of Beacon of Unrest. Three and two black, and we put target artifact or creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under our control. There's going to be so many cards in so many of our opponent's graveyards, and as long as we have a beacon of unrest, we can pluck the most valuable artifact or creature from that graveyard and put it onto the battlefield under our control. Beacon of Unrest is card number 10, and we are so close to completing this Demir build. We have at the moment our commander, and we have at the moment a 58 card deck. When we complete this series, the next time we reconvene, we will add five miscellaneous spells to help out the deck and install our land base. Any suggestions or comments as to what those five miscellaneous spells could be? Leave them in the comment section below and let's talk it over. This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic.